connecting people to innovations in the medical practice. Technology is playing a vital role in the global fight against the coronavirus. Joining the battle are tech giants Apple and Google, who have joined forces to support governments and health authorities with their contact tracing initiatives. What can we expect from this project and other tech tools emerging amid this pandemic? Let's find out from Brian Ma, technology expert from IDC Asia Pacific in Singapore. Brian, great to have you with us. How effective do you think is this new contact uh, tracing platform of Apple and Google? Uh, it can be quite effective as long as you get a critical base of people using it, right? The whole idea is, um, you know, if you've got enough people with the app installed on the phone, the phones kind of ping each other and, and take a log of how many, you know, the, type, the people that you've been in contact with and should one of those people be infected, then you can be notified that, hey, you know what, you may need to get yourself checked out yourself. And the nice thing about what Apple and Google are doing is um, they're, they're very privacy forward as well about this too. So there, there, there's, there's quite a bit of effort made here to protect individual rights in the process. I think that's very important. And one of the main issues of this kinds of contact tracing platforms is privacy and security issues. But of course, uh, we also have to adapt to the local situation. So right here in the Philippines, uh, Brian, what kind of challenges will this uh, Apple Google contact tracing platform face, you think? Well, um, sure, we've got to, first off, we've got to make sure that the application is deployed. We got to make sure that people are installing the application and using it. Um, and that means that they got to be made aware of it. Um, any concerns they may have, it might not even be about privacy. It may be simply about technology. Is it going to drain my battery or that sort of thing? Short answer is no, at least not a lot um, on that, by the way. And so the thing is the, um, you know, as you move forward, you get these installed on these various devices out there. Now, I think one thing that's unique about the Philippines, or um, I guess one thing to point out about the Philippines market is there are a lot of users on what we call feature phones, right? Mm -hmm. Basically more basic non-smartphones uh, with the 12 digit keypads. Those might not, those in general, uh, the contact tracing technology, or in this case, exposure notification as Apple and Google like to call it, um, this technology tends to run on apps in smartphones. And so feature phone users, which are about 35, 40% of the install base of mobile phones in the Philippines, um, are not going to be covered by this. And unfortunately, that means then that we're, uh, it's going to be, that's, it's going to be even more of a challenge to get to that right. uh, mass of users. But uh, as you can see here in the Philippines, uh, with uh, smartphones becoming more cheaper, we're seeing a lot more Filipinos using smartphones rather than the ones with the keypads or what you say, uh, Brian, are feature uh, phones. And you know, right now, the Philippines is uh, divided into three uh, major islands and has about, what, 1,500 municipalities. Do you think uh, we should be using uh, several uh, contact tracing platforms or should there just be one unified platform? Uh, well, the thing is, okay, so the platforms are relatively unified. I think the question is more about whether you have several, if you have several applications, mm -hmm. right? Um, say, for instance, in the United States, it's not one central application for every state. Different individual states are doing their own applications, whereas in other countries, it might be a single application across uh, the entire country. Now, that may be a matter of politics or how the local conditions are, whatever it might be. Um, I would argue in favor of a more centralized approach. That way you really make sure that there aren't any interoperability issues. However, that said, what Apple and Google have done here um, is to address a lot of interoperability. So at least in theory, um, if it is a case where different provinces uh, uh, or regions of the Philippines are using their own individual apps, these should be able to talk to each other as well. And Brian, you know, this virus won't just go away and the battle against uh, the coronavirus continues. Apart from this uh, partnership between Apple and Google, are there other apps to fight this pandemic? Yeah, but that's really in other countries, right? Mm. And so... Um, what can we learn from them? You know, have... Sorry, come again? What can we learn from them? Well, so I guess, um, you know, if you look at some other countries like the UK, they want to do a more centralized approach to contact tracing, right? And what I mean by that is 
I guess you could argue it's a little more aggressive in the sense of true contact tracing where you have individual identities, you have GPS location and all that sort of thing. You could argue is, is quicker in being able to trace who you've been in contact with. In contrast, what Apple and Google are doing here is a more decentralized approach, right? Mm. Where you've been in this log, it doesn't get stored in some central server. It's stored on the phone itself. So it's meant, again, to protect individual users' privacy. And all of this is, by the way, encrypted and anonymized. And so um, I guess there are, there are two different philosophies on how to approach and solve this problem. Um, and again, I guess what Google and Apple are doing here is to try to, again, put privacy first, make sure that that is protected while at the same time still being able to address the challenge that we have here with the pandemic. And when you download the latest uh, software of Apple, you have this new uh, contact tracing uh, uh, application and it comes with it as well, the face mask ID. Yeah. So... Two separate things. First off, actually what, what you're downloading with the latest version of iOS, um, it's the exposure notification APIs. It's the programming layer. So it's not actually the app. The app still has to come from the public health authority or the government. So that's one thing. The other thing, as you pointed out, is, yeah, along with it, along with this bundle of the, the new OS is... Um, the Face ID, they've changed the way Face ID works, right? Normally, mm -hmm. Face ID, when you're going to unlock the phone using your face, it's scanning your entire face. But if you've got a mask here covering your mouth, it has trouble doing so, right? And it'll take a little, it'll take a little while for it to say, okay, I, I'm having trouble recognizing your face, punch in your pin instead. What the new update does is it makes that faster. It gets you to that point quicker where once it doesn't recognize your face immediately it, or, or much more quickly, you get to the point where you can punch in your pin and more quickly unlock your phone. So Apple is adapting the times. They know we've got to make sure that, um, yes. that, we can, that it's user friendly um, and that we can also help make sure that we get past this pandemic safely. Technology adapting to this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you so much uh, for your insights. Brian Ma from IDC Asia Pacific based in Singapore.